I've got a different kind of video today. There's not much explanation because these background techniques are so easy to do, but there's lots of examples because they're so beautiful and versatile. Last week, Simon Hurley shared a video where he used watercolor powders with his gel plates. I love how easy it is to get amazing organic looking blends with these powders. You just sprinkle them over a gel plate. Mine is five by seven inches. I'm using a mix of powders I've had for years. Some are Ken Oliver Color Burst and some are Nouveau Shimmer Powders. You can just use whatever you've got. Then you spritz it with lots of water and put the paper on top, let it sit for a second, and then lift it up. Then you can get a second print by adding some more water. Here I added a little more yellow powder because I felt it got a bit lost in the first print, and you can see that the second print is softer. Then I just tried every color combination I could come up with. On this blue one, I got three prints. This deep one, this middle one, and then this pretty print that looks like a watercolor wash, which I guess is what it is. The really interesting thing about these powders is that many of them separate into their component pigments, so even if you only use one or two colors, you'll see many more. I'm using Nina Index Paper, which is not as thick as 80 pound cardstock, but it is thicker than printer paper. It dries fairly quickly and it warps a little bit, but I've found that it's really easy to flatten it. I went back to blues and then into purples and reds. Then I had to stop just because I had no more space for them to dry. The colors do dry back a little bit, but the colors on the first prints are still really vibrant and intense. Here's a quick look at them, and while I filmed this, I thought I would give Distress Oxide sprays a try as well. Here I use Crackling Campfire, Spice Marmalade, Mustard Seed, and some Walnut Stain. You can see some green left there from the watercolor powders. I didn't clean my gel plate at all throughout this session. I just tried to work through the colors so I didn't have any that conflicted too badly. Again, you can get two prints from each combination of colors, and this time the colors do really dry back quite a bit to give you that characteristic chalk finish that you get with Distress Oxide inks. I'm in love with this technique. When you create colored cardstocks this gorgeous, the possibilities are really endless. Here's a look at all of my backgrounds, powders first and then sprays at the end. I love this half page size too. It gives me enough for one or two cards, but not so much that I'm wondering where to store it. These backgrounds can be used in so many ways. You can stamp on them, stencil on them, emboss with embossing folders, die cut with them. Here's a bunch of cards I made with just some of these backgrounds. I put links to all the supplies I used in the video description below. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.